This time on Hack5, we begin a special series on proxies. Caching, filtering, security, or anonymity, whatever your reasons may be, Darren and I are exploring the ins and outs of this great technology from the ground up. All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Idea Paint. Hello and welcome to a special episode of Hack5, because this week it's all about Proxies. We're Wonderful. going 80s. We are. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's a it's the 80s oh. night down at the Baltic. Oh, that's what's going on. Yeah. You know, a great day. I mean, you have the crazy 80s glasses. I've got the big hair and yeah. the neon neon colors. I got I got my red curtain yeah. over here. You're yeah. kind of blending in, yeah, like camouflage. Done. Yeah. So what's this. going on today? What are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about proxies. In fact, it's a lot of stuff to cover. So we're probably going to be talking about yeah. it for a little bit here because there's so much to it, and I really love the idea that. Now, with the new table, we can uh, really dive into a lot of ideas yeah, this and focus is pretty on sweet. that kind of stuff. Feels kind of like nail polish. Yeah? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it is an egg. I don't know what oh, that means. Yeah, it hey, is. it's an Easter Happy egg. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. To the egg. Hooray. Oh my god, we should oh my god, we should paint this uh -huh. like an Easter egg. Like oh. do little circles yeah. and little stripes and stuff. Okay. There's an idea. We got a gift from a fan. Oh, Fantastic, let's do it. What do we get? It's a little one this week. Oh, hooray. Ooh, got some fluffies coming out of there. Oh, yeah. Dear Hack5, I found this at a local Goodwill and thought you might appreciate my friend Bob. Oh. He was one of Microsoft's biggest software flops, but highlights some of the 95 goodness that we all love and remember. Sincerely, James in Wisconsin. Oh Hack my gosh. fans. I, I mean, I've heard of it. I know it. I've seen the screenshots and whatnot. I've never actually... Got a copy of Bob. Now we need to, <laughs> you we know, need to yeah, run a Yeah, I think everybody has heard about Bob. I mean, this is as famous as Clippy. Yeah, you know? totally. That is fantastic. I don't think I ever had Oh, one. wait, hang on. It's for distribution only with a new PC. So we might right. be breaking some licenses right. if we install it in a VM. Yes, of course. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> that is awesome. Thanks for sending that by. We need to remind you guys about 11.11. We found Ooh. out that it is all ages. It is all ages. Our party is on May 3rd, the Hack 5 1111 party. You can find out all about it over at hack5.org slash 1111. And if you'd like to RSVP and you're not down with Facebook, we totally understand that. So hit us up on the dark net or email feedback at hack5.org. There's a dark net? No, that's the first rule of it. So <laughs> we're getting into some awesome proxies. And this is totally cool. So let's just go ahead and break down like the fundamentals. Okay. Um, Let's do it. I mean, as you guys know, um, proxies, it's basically a technology that enables one to like say bounce their internet traffic off of uh, or tunnel their internet net traffic through like a third party server. And then typically this is like a Linux box running a daemon, but there's also plenty of other types of proxies as well as reasons to use them. So why do we even have proxies? Well. This won't cover everything, but here's a couple of examples of why you might want a proxy. First of all, security. You know, you keep your web traffic encrypted, or at least you're moving where the unencrypted endpoint is, when you use a secure tunnel. And for me, that's what it's all about. You know, most proxies employ encryption, where they encapsulate every single packet of information into a private tunnel so that would-be eavesdroppers can't peer into and see like what it is that you're surfing. And I don't care if it's like an open Wi-Fi at the airport or even a wired LAN at the hotel. If it's not my network, I don't trust it. So security. Security, number one. And number two, filtering. Mm -hmm. So I really, really hate it whenever a network operator does this, and I'm sure you guys have encountered it too. It turns out that there's porn on the internet. Yeah, what? That, I know, right? Can you believe that? More research is due. Yeah, anyway, you, you can do the research on that. But anyway, this isn't something that I've encountered, of course. But I'm talking about when a sysop decides to use a proxy to filter content, whether it's a DNS blacklist or a content key keywords or proxies can be used to shut down browsing the sites the operator deems inappropriate. inappropriate. This reminds me of when I used to work at a bank and they blocked Hack5. Not yeah. cool. And then the WebSense thing said blocked because yeah. of 
hacking. And I was just like, what the heck? That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy talk. It's not just employers, though. I mean, you know, a lot of people employ no, full-time technology. No, it's not. It could be um, schools. Mm -hmm. Schools do that as well. Um, they block the Hack5 else? forums a lot. They do. Yeah, yeah And then, of true. course, you always have uh, governments, you know, ah, those draconian that's a good point. governments and their filtering. Yeah, so whether it's porn or blogs criticizing a draconian government or whatever you have, I mean, You know, what's filtering. interesting, though, is that proxy is used to filter the internet and then also proxy technology can be used to bypass oh, censorship. <laughs> I'm going to call it censorship, call it what it is, okay? okay? You know, filtering, it's censorship. It's not the entire web if Our, you're uh, First taking Amendment, some right? stuff. Well, you know, and, and <laughs> that's the thing is I believe that uh, the web should be uncensored for everybody regardless of what amendments they may have um, in their particular jurisdiction, yeah. you know, because I grew up on the internet. I don't feel so any sort I. of national. Well, I mean, I feel nationality, but I also consider the internet home. And so, mm -hmm. yep. regardless of getting into some big political debate, uh, you know, likewise, proxies are a great weapon against censorship. I mean, for example, during the 2011 Egyptian Revolution uh, and following the January 25th protest, access to Twitter and Facebook.com from within the country of Egypt was completely blocked. Mm, yes, I remember hearing about that. And what did hackers do? They were like, guys, hey, use some open proxies. And that's an awesome way to bypass. I mean, the same thing in, nice. in China. You know, you can use oh, yeah. proxies to bypass the great firewall of China. Totally true. Yep. And another reason why you could use a proxy is for caching. Oh. So you can speed up web browsing with a caching proxy like Squid, which is implemented in a lot of the more advanced open source routers that we really like, including Smoothwall and Untangle. Oh, I like Untangle. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, you like Untangle. I've heard about it from you all the time. So the idea being that, <laughs> and Paul's back there going, Paul's like, yeah, yeah, Paul loves Smoothwall. In fact, that's what we're running here. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is that it holds copies of a web page or other resource in the cache. So if Darren visits zombo.com or awesome what have website. you in the morning, then I can go there in the afternoon and I grab a local copy. Thus saving bandwidth and it speeds up the network. Yay. Yeah, nice we like and easy. That. Guess what it also can be used for? What? Eavesdropping. Mm. Yeah, that's true. A hacker's favorite. <laughs> but it can be used for good. Well, and that's the beautiful thing about this is we're showing both sides of the coin. You know, like a Wi-Fi honeypot or even a man in the middle attack, a proxy can facilitate eavesdropping by routing all of the traffic from a client, or say a victim in this case, through an eavesdropper server. And, you know, this enables the kind of packet sniffing mischief that you might imagine. You know, pack password snooping, oh, well yeah. snarfing, stealing of cookies, session hijacking. I'm thinking about pineapples right now yeah. for some strange reason. Even altering content in transit. And, <laughs> you know, the same kind of stuff that your ISP can do right now. Right. So, but they don't. Sure. Or do they? Hmm. But nah. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> Private networks. Traveling abroad and need access to resources on your office network? There's a proxy for that. Basically, bridging two or more networks, a proxy can en enable access to stuff like printers, internal web servers, even private peer-to-peer -peer networks or dark nets. I don't know about any dark nets. Who doesn't like a little privacy with their file sharing, huh? Or how about a little anonymity? You know, I'm just saying, network <laughs> proxies can be used to provide some level of anonymity. Right. <laughs> you just had to go there and pull that one out, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, a, a, uh, a set of uh, proxies can provide some level of anonymity by making it difficult to trace mm -hmm. where someone's traffic is coming from, going to. The most notable examples, of course, include the Onion Router as well as I2P. That's short for the Invisible Internet Project. And we're actually working up a special on those in of its own. So if you're a fan of like freedom and privacy, I think you're going to love that stuff. So stay tuned. But just be aware that these are not foolproof. I mean, in design, the networks don't account for a global passive adversary, you know, like the NSA. Mm. Just gonna put that up My there. favorite people. There are a lot more proxy types and implementations than you can shake a stick at. But We'll cover just a few in <laughs> some of the more popular ones and get into the practice very soon. That's right. And when we get back, we're going to go into some of the types before we get into some of the practice. Mm. Stay tuned. We'll be back after a quick break. 
Idea Paint transforms virtually anything you can paint into a high performance dry erase surface that erases cleanly every time. And Idea Paint gives you the space that you need to collaborate, interact, and fully explore your creativity no matter where you use it, big ideas are sure to follow. And Idea Paint is one of the most flexible, durable, and cost effective dry erase solutions on the market. So head over to ideapaint.com slash hack5 to learn more. And we're back with types of proxies. Hit me, what you got? Bam! So first up, forwarding proxies. Write it. Typically speaking, a forwarding proxy is a private service set up for one or more users that forwards or relays internet traffic. Kind of like what the name says. An example would be a SOX proxy setup on a virtual private server that you maintain and only you have access to. Use of this proxy requires authentication, and once connected, some or all of your internet traffic is routed through this host. Ha hmm. oh, ha, yeah, yes. interesting. Contrast that to an open proxy, which is similar to a forwarding proxy, except that authentication isn't required, so... Ooh, yeah. it's free love! Yeah, it's free love. These open proxies or anonymous proxies are generally available to anyone on the internet. Most HTTP or web-based proxies don't require a whole lot of skill or network configuration to use. That's my favorite kind. So, for example, visiting the open proxy darkbrowsing.com allows a user to pull up pages like Twitter and Facebook without actually going to those domains. So as far as the network operator is concerned, the user is only visiting the proxy and the subsequent web pages are requested on the proxy's behalf. Yeah, but Bam. then you also have to think, though, then that proxy could potentially log. I mean, I'm yeah. just throwing out, what is it, dark um, dark browsing? Dark but, browsing, yeah. But there's we have, we've not vetted that. So if you go in there, and I'm sure they're fine, but, you know, if you type in your stuff and That's true. suddenly you get hijacked. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. My favorite, reverse proxies. And we're going to get into those in more detail soon. Basically, a reverse proxy is one that facilitates a connection between two networks, often making it possible to access an internal resource which is otherwise inaccessible from the internet. A good example of which, well, for hacker at least, would be like a Wi-Fi pineapple in the wild connecting back to my virtual private server in the cloud, allowing me to route that VPS into my pineapple, and we're actually going to get into that in practice soon. Oh, ah, okay. So the nice thing about your reverse proxy setup is that it's able to overcome NAT. Yes. Yeah. So NAT, or Network Address Translation, is a gateway, typically your home router, which assigns private IP addresses to each connected client, and then allows all of those clients to access the internet through a single public IP address. So I know all about this. Since each machine on a NATed network doesn't actually have its own public IP address, it makes it more difficult to run a server like SSH. Typically, port forwarding is necessary to allow incoming connections to get routed to the right machine inside of the network. But outgoing traffic doesn't have this limitation. Thus, the reverse proxy is able to establish its connection without any special network configuration, a lovely technique that we know as NAT traversal. traversal. Woohoo! All right, now in just a bit, we're going to be setting up a SOX5 proxy connection. And of all our proxy types, SOX is our favorite. It stands for Socket Secure, and it's an internet protocol that allows you to route your network traffic through a proxy, obviously. It was originally developed by David Koblas, a sysadmin over at MIPS back in 92, and then later extended to version 4 by Ying Da Li at, at NEC, or NEC, or whatever you want to call them. And finally, version 5 was adopted by the Internet Engineering Task Force, or the IETF, back in 1996. Uh, this is great. Uh, as part of SOX 5, a lot of it, uh, you know, it can be used over SSH, what we know as Secure Shell, a network communication protocol for secure, you know, access to remote shells. And we use it all the time. It's so great and easy to work with. And it operates at a lower level than HTTP proxying. So like Shannon was talking about those websites you could go to and use them to bounce. That's only for HTTP. This is able to uh, um, allow you to route any TCP or UDP connections on a SOX 5, that is. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, there's ma two main That's types, useful. SOX 4 and 5. 5 is the one that can do UDP as well as IP6. It can do DNS lookups, and uh, so we prefer it. Yes, yes, we do. Now, in just a bit, Darren will be helping me set up my first SOX proxy in Windows and Linux. But first, a quick break. Woohoo! 